Hello, welcome to the Daily Apologies Podcast. I'm your host, Dean Meadows, and thank you so much for being here with me again on another episode. Remember, at the end of the episode, if you really enjoyed our content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and then also the bell that gives you notifications for future videos. And on today's episode, we actually start off, or not start off, but conclude season four with a very tragic subject, but I think something that we can all glean several lessons from. As many of you know, uh, this past year, uh, world-famous apologist Ravi Zacharias passed away from cancer, and then um, it was just a complete uh, gut punch to learn about the investigation that went on at Ravi Zacharias International Ministries, but also even more of a gut punch to find out that the uh, the accusations about Ravi's behavior revealed that he had been sexually abusing and harassing women for years. And so it's just one of those things where as we look at this lesson uh, of the life of Ravi Zacharias, it should have been a lesson of one of, you know, me coming on the on the podcast and saying, man, what a guy of great uh, character, what a guy of great stature, what a great example for all apologists uh, to emulate. But instead, it's really one of like a Greek mythological tragedy. And so as a former hero of mine, um, I've taken a lot of time to really digest the information and the report. And here's what I've learned from the Ravi Zacharias scandal. Number one, apologetics is not a substitute for genuine relationship with God, for a genuine relationship with God. There's no question about it that apologetics is absolutely positively needed. As Western culture grows more and more secular, God needs people to stand in the intellectual gap to, to meet the atheists and the skeptics where they are and to address the challenges that their ideas uh, present to Christianity. However, it's absolutely clear, 100% clear, from uh, Ravi's actions that an accumulation of facts about God doesn't equal um, a genuine knowledge or care for him. I, I liken it to, to this. Um, say somebody wanted to know about skydiving. There's really uh, two types of knowledge that play into that. It's first the knowledge that comes from the accumulation of facts. So I could just simply sit down and read every single book that there is to read about skydiving. And I could tell you that, hey, I know uh, everything that there is to know about skydiving. But I'm, until I get into the plane with the parachute, climb to 10,000 feet or 20,000 feet or, or, or however high and actually jump out of the plane, I don't have this experiential knowledge that comes with skydiving. And the same thing is true with God. I can, I can memorize facts about God. I can uh, defend uh, the truth about, about God and who he is. But until I gain this experiential knowledge and maintain that relationship over a period of time, I can't really say that I have a full picture and complete uh, knowledge uh, of God. And it's clear just from the actions of Ravi Zacharias that, that at some point he claimed, or at least it seemed like he claimed to have this type of relationship, but in the end, he really didn't. And so if apologetics is merely leveraged in order to you know, say a lot of interesting facts about God on stage, it, it might allow some of us to, to travel the world and talk to big crowds, but ultimately what we will be is someone who is just dead bones on the inside of a spiritual coffin dressed in our Sunday best. So the first thing that I, I really take away from the Ravi Zacharias scandal is that apologetics is not a substitute for a genuine relationship with God. And then number two, um, apologists have lost even more credibility. If you've ever tried to dialogue with skeptics, online, or at least some skeptics online, it is so hard because of the challenges that are presented. Because number one, 
they're naturally skeptical of any claim that anybody makes. But two, there's already this credibility gap uh, with apologists. The term apologist online is really a, a dirty word that's found in a lot of skeptical social media circles. I mean, I call it the, the scarlet A um, for those of us who have formal apologetics training. And so in light of what Ravi has done, um, and in light of what he's done and how this will reverberate for all apologists, it's just going to be that much more difficult to really try to connect to people uh, in the skeptical community and really people uh, in general. I've seen a multitude of atheist content creators really just have a field day uh, with this scandal and really hammer hard um, – Number one, why Christianity is not true, but also the hypocrisy of uh, Ravi, Zachari Ravi Zacharias. Furthermore, even if we're not even talking about engaging the skeptical community, uh, what is that going to mean for a student, a Christian student, or a, a student who might be uh, skeptical about where to go in life? Which worldview is uh, or does correspond to reality the best? And so it's going to be hard for a student uh, to have some credibility or, or to, or to maintain some type of credibility for apologists. But, but even for us as students of the world, it's re really going to be hard for us to engage the world in light of what Ravi has done. So that's number two. The second thing that I've learned is that apologists have lost credibility. Uh, the third thing that I've learned is that if Ravi can fail, so can we. Uh, obviously, prior to these explicit details that came out about Ravi's misconduct, um, he he passed away from cancer, and it was as if um, a giant like a C.S. Lewis had passed away. And and at the time, it was a beautiful thing to see this guy just endure this journey uh, in such a brave manner with his family. Um, with so many supporters, with his organization behind him. And then when he died, um, you just saw a multitude of scholars and apologists just talk about how Ravi Zacharias had impacted their lives for the better. And even uh, at his funeral, regardless of political party, anytime that uh, a vice president comes to somebody's funeral, that indicates that that person made a giant impact had a huge footprint uh in the in the world but you know how quickly that all changed i mean his falling from grace is a reminder that sin crouches at the door uh of us all and so the question right now for those of us who are in the apologetics community who are dealing with uh habitual sins how long are we going to allow that to entangle us to the point of no return and if it can happen to a guy like Ravi Zacharias, uh, certainly it can happen to us all. So that's the third thing that I've learned is that if Ravi can fail, uh, so can we. Number four, the fourth thing that I've learned is that um, we have got to do more and we need to do more to protect accusers. As I reflect on this scandal, like a lot of people, I initially did not want the accusations to be true. I mean, I I, I didn't sit back and, um, you know, attack Lori Ann Thompson, who is who's uh, the main uh, accuser who kind of broke the news about uh, what was taking place with Ravi. But uh, as I sat back, I watched as many social media influencers uh, attacked Lori Ann Thompson uh, to protect Ravi. And even his leadership team at Ravi Zacharias International Ministries, I mean, they came out and they denounced the accusations, which they later uh, said they shouldn't have done and that was a mistake. But they did that on the basis of the words of Ravi Zacharias. They trusted Ravi to the point where uh, they they categorically denounced that these things were, were not true. And so few people outside of those who actually broke the story um, fail to just 
take a step back, take a deep breath and ask the question, hey, before we go on the attack, um, have we really checked out all of the facts behind what's being said? Now, I don't want to promote this idea of guilty until proven innocent, but here's the point. The apologetics community uh, let Lorianne Thompson down by quickly dismissing her and her story, and, and that just cannot be allowed to take place uh, ever again when the next situation like this uh, arises. So that's the fourth thing that I've learned is that we need to do uh, more to protect accusers. Uh, the fifth thing that I've learned is that hypocrisy does not negate the truth of a worldview. Certainly, certainly, uh, there will be those who dismiss Christianity because of Ravi's actions. There's just no doubt about that at all. And so, But while these are hideous actions that this man, uh, you know, did, we all need to make sure that we aren't dismissing the claims of Christianity with regards to its truthfulness because of this guy's hypocrisy. And the New Testament uh, gives us an example of people who were, who were hypocrites. For instance, I think of, of Demas, who was one time a fellow laborer with Paul, uh, as you know, Philemon 124 notes, and that he was also in prison with Paul in Rome, as Colossians 4.14 notes. But Paul writes in 2 Timothy 4.10 that Demas because he loved the world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. So here's the question. Does Demas's hypocrisy mean uh, that Christianity was or is untrue? Of course not. I, I mean, did Demas's actions change the truth of Jesus's resurrection, the existence of God, or the willingness of the apostles to die for what they uh, believe that they saw? Uh, of course not. So the desertion of a worldview or the abuse of a worldview does not invalidate a worldview. So in conclusion, um, I think these are lessons that all of us need to consider, that we need to meditate on, that we need to pray about. But also uh, we need to make sure that some of these things uh, don't happen again. And if they, if we find ourselves falling into the same traps as we did uh, with the Ravi scandal, uh, we need to really do uh, a serious heart and mind check about these types of issues that were related to Ravi's uh, scandal. Uh, obviously, this has reverberated throughout the uh, apologetics community, the Christian community and has become national news. And it's just so sad to see that a legacy that was forged on stages across the world has now crumbled into absolute rubble. And we should be mindful uh, of, of these lessons that unfortunately Ravi Zacharias has taught us, um, not in his life, but only revealed after his death. And so that is the Daily Apologist podcast. That's This is season four, episode four. And if you found this content beneficial, go ahead and once again, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to get notifications, and then check out our content at www.thedailyapologist.com. Uh, there you can find resources like blogs. You can find other videos. You can find other podcasts. And if you want to help out the ministry, you can even donate there as well. My name is Dean Meadows. This is the Daily Apologist Podcast. Remember, equip yourself to engage culture.